Hello? Hello? Is this... Is this thing working? I... I... I'm still nervous about streaming on Twitch. Twitch? I'm not streaming on Twitch, I'm streaming on YouTube. Hi everybody. <laughs> Apparently I still haven't got my shit together. Um... I overslept, I woke up, and I was like, man... I really want to make some paper minis. And the reason why is, um, I guess I'll switch over to the other camera. Oh, there we go. Okay, so um, I'm not sure if I'm going to put this up as a regular video, but I think I might. I might edit this down and make it, make it into an actual video. Um, but we'll see. The main thing that made me want to start making these paper minis is... Can you hear me loud and clear? That's good. Uh, thank you. So... Yeah, I wanted to make some paper minis because I got these things in the mail. Uh, well, this thing in the mail, this marker, this Posca marker. And it's like a paint marker, apparently. Like it puts down paint, not ink. I, I don't know how it works. I, But uh, it's the thing about it is it creates this incredible like dark color and it's really good. You have to kind of like squeeze it out like that. I hope it didn't lead through, but yeah, look at that. It's like some really, really dark uh, black stir, and it's kind of it takes a while to dry, but it's really satisfying to use. And I was like, I want to draw something with this. Um, I actually, I actually uh, accidentally printed out my paper mini too small, so I cut it out from this, and I just used the rest of the paper to just, just doodle things. Look at this thing here. They made me watch. Yeah, uh, yeah. Probably throwing this in the bin, so, you know. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, the plan for today, right? Oh, I just hit something. Oh, well. The plan for today is that I want to make some paper minis, and I want to make them traditionally using a Posca marker. Oh, man, it's Itaqua's bin. Hello. I was just watching your channel yesterday, last night. I think I was watching the Forbidden Psalm ones. I wasn't sure, but I was like, I really want to get some Bustiara miniatures. Hello, welcome to the channel. Um, yeah, what a coincidence. What a coinky dink. Like, uh, literally watching your stuff like yesterday. Anyway, um, so, uh, yeah, I have these like paper mini bases that I made that I think are pretty cool. Uh, they are like slider min mini bases. So let me see if I can get it working. Um, let's see here. But yeah, if you guys like um, the stuff that I put out on my channel, you'll love the stuff on Itaquas' channel, if I pronounce that correctly. Look at that! You can kind of like slide it in and out. So um, I'm not going to make... Uh, these, like, I'm not gonna draw this small. This is a drawing that I did and I printed it out. But uh, I am gonna draw it on, on here and then, you know, shrink it down and print it out. And we'll see the final result, I think. Maybe not on this stream. Like, we won't print it out and then cut it up and everything on this stream. But we will draw the things on this stream. Uh, but yeah. Um, I think we'll just get started, actually. Okay, so, yeah, I will highly recommend these bases. I'll actually put a link to where I got the templates for these, but these are in, in immensely helpful for storing stuff. You can basically uh, just have these and the paper minis and you can put them all in this small box that I got for three bucks from Daiso, which is like a Japanese store where everything is three bucks. But yeah, let's... Let's make some monsters, I think. Uh, okay, so let's go to Maze Rats um, by Ben Milton. And let's see, monsters and animals. So uh, let's roll for a monster base uh, and see what we get. Because, yeah, I think that's where we start, right? Three, terrestrial, okay. What kind of terrestrial animal do we get as a base? One tree, armadillo. Well, this is already throwing me for a loop because I don't know how to draw an armadillo. That's fine. Uh, let's write this down somewhere. 
Um, I'll just use this scrap piece of paper, I think. Yeah, let's just use this. All right. Um, the base is armadillo. Armadillo. The problem is that I used this to actually draw on some um, shirts last night. And I think I frayed up the marker. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, yo, Rexfield, what's up? Actually, I got a shirt right here. Let, let me let me show you. Show you. Yeah, 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 I got a shirt right here. Look at this thing. I drew on it. I only use them for five leagues from the Borderlands, five parsecs from home. Those are, those are some good games. I'm trying to get it back into it, actually. Actually, that's the reason why I was trying to make paper minis. I was, I was, I was either wanting to go back into Forbidden Psalm or five leagues from the Borderlands. So, yeah, I was just like doodling on this shirt and I was like, shit, I freed out my marker. <laughs> ah, get it out of here. Get it out of here. Okay, there we go. So, okay. I uh, needed a break from editing. Notice Chow was on. Can't draw for Toffee, but always looking to improve. Dude, I, I love your channel so much. It's incredibly... Incre your, your voice is incredibly relaxing. Um, yeah, it, you introduced me to a lot of very cool games. Um, and part of it was that I was like just looking for good miniatures. So I was looking actually at your pa papercraft um, terrain series. Are you using a thicker paper? Oh, so these, right, the paper minis that I'm about to draw... I'm not going to draw them uh, directly. Um, I'm going to draw a big version and then I'm going to just scan it in and then I'm I'm going to cheat, basically. The reason why is because I want to use my Posca marker. And if I use a Posca marker with uh, this large of a tip and I try to draw a small drawing, that's probably not going to go very well. So we're going to... We're going to... Did it dry? Okay, it's good. It dried. I was hoping that this wouldn't like just stain that. I don't have a working printer, so I got to go full traditional. Maybe we will do some traditional ones as well. Why not? But first, let's draw a big one. So an armadillo is our base. Um, monster features. Okay, uh, what does this armadillo have? One and five. That's a compound eyes. Okay. Um, all right. Compound eyes. That's already kind of creepy. Uh, monster traits. Give me something weird, please. Five and two. That's going to be planar. I don't know what that means in this context. I'm going to reroll. Uh, two and one. Crystalline is the one I got by preferred decaying, which is right below that. And you know what? It's my monster. I get to do what I want. So I'm going to go with decaying. Decaying. Okay. Okay. Uh, monster abilities. I think this will be cool. Let's see. Two and a four. That's going to be an ethereal effect. Okay. So we have to actually roll for a magical effect that they can do. Uh, what can they do? It's a mage armadillo. Six and two. Summoning, okay, all right, okay, all right, okay, all right, okay. Summoning, so we'll like give them a staff or something. Okay, summoning. Can't draw either, but I would like to learn too. I was also curious about editing also. I've been learning about more advanced video editing recently, but I haven't been able to use any of it for my videos. I've been learning stuff like um, how to uh, mask out like magic mask out um, moving objects on the screen without a green screen, that kind of thing. And it's fun. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. Monster personality, I don't think we need. Maybe the weakness might help us, but we might just forgo it. I don't know. Uh, that's going to be a six and a three. That's going to be a weak spot, which does not really. Well, we, we could say the eyes are the weak spot. Okay, so yeah, get that out of here. All right, let's draw something. Hell yeah, let's draw something. Can't wait. I don't know how to draw an armadillo. So the first step in my process is I am going to go on Google and I'm going to search for armadillo. Um, let's see. I recently gotten into Itaquas Bane's videos. Cool to see you here. Yeah, no, it, Bane's videos are like freaking great. I, I love them so much. Um, I didn't even know he watched this channel, to be honest. 
<laughs> so that was um that was a surprise. Um let's see, do we have a do we have a pencil here? Okay, okay, let's go with this. Alright, let's go. Okay, how do I draw an armadillo? Um Okay, they are kind of like weird little red things, so we're gonna go like that and then we're gonna go like that. Okay, kind of have like this shield around them. So I'm gonna say since they're decaying, uh, some parts of the shield are like torn off and there's like skeletal parts here. And you can't see any of this, I, I'm, I'm like well aware. But um, also we need it to kind of be upright, right? Since the paper mini, do we need to actually? I'm not sure. Huh. Yeah, I, I kind of want it to be a mini, so I think we'll have an upright armadillo. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. So uh, we'll erase some of this out. Where is my goddamn eraser? Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll just like, uh, I'll just fudge this a bit. Let's go like that, right? I know you can't see any of this, but um, soon all will be made clear. I, I don't want to just jump in with like ink. So yeah. Hope everybody is doing well, by the way. Oh, uh, compound eyes. So like, uh, let's do like a bunch of eyes here. Because it depends on how big you want the base and the creature to be. Yeah, I'm thinking like way more like squarish might work. You know, like 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 th like this might work maybe. I don't know. Uh, we'll do like that. We need to make sure that it's like for sure visible that it's decaying. So that's why we're using. Actually, all the features have to be very visible, and that's why I'm using a big plus cut marker instead of my regular pens for this. Um, I'm just gonna like just go in straight and just not give a shit and just um, draw uh, and possibly make a huge mess. So we got compound eyes, which I think I'm just going to exaggerate. I'm going to make it like huge eyes. Let's like do like that and like that. Why not? And uh, just like crazy compound eyes. They're decaying and they're summoning. So I'm going to give them a, a staff of some, of some kind. Um, let's do like a... Let's do like a... I want to get to the like full drawing part because I want you guys to be able to see see what I'm doing as fast as is possible. But I do also want to plan this out a little bit. Um, yeah, that's fine. So we'll do that. One thing I do like about like doing this paper mini stuff is that like I have to focus a lot on the composition of it. You know, I have to make sure that like it's very visible even from a distance what I'm drawing. Um, once I put in the ink at least, so here go that, go that, all right, go that, and yeah, okay. Let's go like that. Yeah, okay. All right, that's enough of the sketching. Let's actually ink it out now. All right, that's quick. Um, so the plan for this is I will ink it out. Uh, the main details I'm going to be inking out using this huge ass Posca marker. And then I'm going to be using this brush pen. Uh, this is just a normal brush pen. Uh, and I'm going to be using it for the smaller details. So let's start. Um, I kind of want to, okay, so compound eyes is a thing, right? Uh, the decaying part, I want to make it a bit more obvious. So I think I'm going to like cut in around here. Okay, erase this part. And I'm going to make some parts of the armadillo essentially like rotting off. I think that'll be fun. And we'll be doing a few of these. So it, it's fine if like some of them are not perfect, you know? You know, it's we're Bob Rossing it. We, we don't need everything to be perfect. I say, as I try to quell my perfectionistic tendencies tell myself that everything is going to be okay um okay there we go let's try and see what happens i've never used postcards they seem really fun remember seeing them first on jp covert stuff hey that's where i saw them too and that's how i got to try postcards as well funny how that works okay um uh this is terrifying Okay, are we, are we gonna go with, uh, yeah, we can just go like that. I'm not, the, the reason why it's terrifying, by the way, is because I'm not used to, um, this thick of a marker. 
just in general i'm used to like more i guess uh pressure sensitive stuff you know i'm not i'm not used to like just using a big old marker and just hacking away at stuff which is uh a skill in and of itself i believe so we're just gonna draw this out okay let's okay it's rotting right so let's do a bit of um how are we gonna do this how do i make it rotting just from like like looking at it uh we could do like some kind of like thing where it's like the skin is melting off its bones that might be that might be cool we can do something like that let's go with that oh that's kind of disgusting i like that i like that yeah that's cool that's like maybe do something like that okay yeah i know it is going good yeah Look at that. Okay, we'll like put uh, a little bit of a leg there. And yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm liking how this is going already. I was getting a bit nervous initially about using these Poscas because I have very little experience using them, but it's just drawing, right? It's just drawing. It's a little bit daunting using a marker as big as this for a drawing as small as this it's not that small but um it's a huge marker so <laughs> look at those compound eyes look at them oh those are like mosquito eyes kind of disgusting so i i was watching a horror movie last night actually um it's called like the borderlands and i don't want to spoil it but uh it really made me want to make some like body horror stuff uh how do they feel to use they are fantastic like they the the way that they lay down ink i don't know if it's visible on the camera but like god they're like so dark in terms of the ink put down so uh, a, a easy comparison to make actually is um yeah so i have a whiteboard marker right here right so if i take this i do that at first it looks like okay that's that's dark enough um but after it dries i'm not sure if it's visible on the camera but after it dries it is nowhere as dark as the posca marker so it feels like um like i'm just laying down thick amounts of paint which is simultaneously scary but also really cool uh let's go with that Okay. This is a weird ass armadillo, I have to say. I guess armadillos are all kind of strange. They're little like red red light creatures uh with shells almost. Like yeah, they're kind of strange. Uh we'll do like that. No, like let's say the shell is like broken off, right? Like yeah. Like that. All right, you've convinced me I'll pick one up at some point. I actually bought a whole pack of them, like of the black ones in every single size after I got this and I was like, this is the best thing ever. And I just got a whole. I just couldn't help myself. Actually, um, it was interesting because I was like uh, watching Itakos' videos like yesterday, as I said, and I was like, should I buy from Bistiarum or should I buy these markers? And I actually loaded up my whole cart from this theorem, but um, I decided to go for the markers. Um, will it roll around like a fleshy tumbleweed, carving some <laughs> circles in the dirt and the sand? I like that idea. No, that, that's that's great. Yeah, no, I like that. Um, I feel like it will. I'm I'm kind of like going with the decaying idea and like just giving it these parts where the shell is basically broken and you can see into it and that kind of thing. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, that's fun to draw. Yeah, something about like these weird creatures that is like just so fun to just draw. And something about a Posca marker as well, where you're just drawing with a, like a whiteboard marker essentially, but it's a lot darker. So I uh, I was invited to this uh, company to actually... Um, how do I explain this? Like I was supposed to like draw some stuff. For them on like a large piece of paper 
and I use like a big whiteboard marker and I think that's where I got my start with like loving to use like these big chunky markers. Uh, actually, let me zoom this in. Try to zoom this in. Let's zoom this in. Yeah, let's zoom it in. I think it's like a bit hard to see. Um, oh boy, look at that. Look at that. We got, we got to zoom in. There we go. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, I need to move my paper a bit, I think. There we go. Cool. All right. Is this better? Is this easier to see? I find markers really daunting, especially coloring with them. I don't know. I think like coloring with them is not as hard as like uh, using a very dark marker to just go in and immediately start drawing. Like when I was doing the work for the, like that company, I was like not drawing a pencil under drawing like I am here. I was just literally drawing full figures and like stuff like just without any underdrawing. And that was like a bit terrifying for me, but also really fun. Like, uh, I was like, I, if I fuck up, I'm, I, I really fuck up, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. All right, that, no, that looks all right. Let's go with that. But you know, at the end of the day, these things are so quick and easy to make. And they're so bold that like, um, if you mess up a bit, it's okay, it's all right. Just make another one. Like really quick to make these like marker drawings and just show like, like uh, kind of like draw a figure out really quickly because of how bold they are. I feel like with painting and all that, you have to build it up, inking as well, if you're using a smaller brush. That's much better, it makes it easier to see the details. Nice, okay, that's great. Okay, let's do like that. I'm not putting on music, by the way, because I, I, like I said, I might cut this up and make it into a video for the channel. Actually, I probably will. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be using the original audio from here, but in case I do, in case I do, I'm not going to put on music. Normally, I put on like Noel's music because Heymart the, Heymart the Catastrophe the label for Noel was very kind to allow me to use the music from Noel for this channel, which is thanks. That's amazing. Um, but yeah, uh, I think today we'll do without the music. Let's go with uh, something like that. I'm just making up stuff. I'm just jazzing at this point. It's like a decaying wizardly type character kind of thing. Armadillo compound eyes. It's a bit more um, normal, I guess, than I thought it would look. Which is uh, interesting, I guess. I'll probably use like the, the, the brush pen to add some details on the stuff here later on. Because those are a bit too small for me to get to reliably with something as huge as this. Okay, let's go with that. All right, looks good, I think. Yeah. All right, that's like, that's the, that's the first drawing done. I mean, we, we can add more to it and I'm gonna add uh, more details to it, but that's essentially like the basis of that first drawing done already. Let's do like some like shining on the compound eyes. Like, like that. Like, you, you can't see these on the mini itself, but I think they might make a difference in, like, how you s I look at it. Let's do some markings on the cane there. Or stuff, or whatever it is. Oh, it hasn't fully dried. Oops. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. I, I, I'm okay with getting a bit dirty. It's alright. Um, But that did not fully dry. Okay, it didn't smear, which is good. All right. Yeah, these uh, postcard markers take a little bit to dry, so it takes a little while. Okay, let's go with that, that, that. I'm just like adding a bit of uh, flavor and texture, primarily texture to some of these things, a bit of hatching here and there. Uh, yeah, I'm liking this. 
I think this is a great start for like uh our minis, our randomly generated uh minis. And I think we're gonna do a few of them today. Let's say uh let's aim for four, let's say. I think that's a good number. Uh does he have a leg missing? He does! <laughs> Oh no! Yeah, he does. No, that's 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 a leg right here. Whoops! You're right. You're right. Oh no! I'm not a real artist. I'm a fake one. Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> should be fine since you're bringing bringing in the digital time minor cleanup. Yeah, it should be fine. Let's do like uh, let's do something like that there. You should make it a decayed knob. Well, it's too late for that now. It's fine. It looks fine. Let's do like, uh... Yeah, I like that. Oh, this is so fun. I should do this more often. I used to like make little creatures like based off maze rats quite a bit. And uh, I never thought about making them into miniatures, but this makes sense. Yeah, I think like... So um, this will be like... like this size? Will it still be visible? Like, uh, yeah, I think it would be right. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna try, like, I'm trying to try, like, make it as big as it is on the camera there. And yeah, it should be visible, I think. Yeah, it should be good. We should be good to go. Okay. <laughs> A decay knob would have been good. Yeah, like, that. damn it, damn it all. I've ruined it. Oh, well, it's fine. It's fine. All right, next up, um, let's do another one. Let's go maze rats. Uh, monsters and animals. Okay, I I'll keep it zoomed in just just cause um, the uh, roll on this. Um, uh, monster base is gonna be aquatic. Okay, aquatic animals are. 4-4, four, four. okay, that's gonna be a platypus. I don't know how to draw a platypus seed. I feel like I'm a fake artist, it's a, it's a platypus. I, I got a platypus and I don't know how to draw a platypus. I'll, I'll figure it out, it's fine. How hard can it be to draw a platypus? Okay, um, let's, let's write this down, uh, platypus. I should have gotten an actual piece of paper instead of this cut up junk, but whatever. Platypus. All right, that's the base. What else? Penguin? I feel like uh, Platypus is just a knockoff penguin, yeah. Um, knockoff penguin that's more yellow? Why am I thinking about Psyduck when I think of Platypus? Is that accurate? Like Psyduck as in like the mo Pokemon? Six and six, we got wings. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, we got wings. Uh, I'm gonna like give him huge wings, I guess. Hmm, okay. Monster traits. Uh tree and tree. Why am I getting doubles all the time? Um that's gonna be fungal. Oh yes. I love fungal abominations. Platypus should be fine. Remember it's got his stingers in his feet. Platypus poison. Wait, is that a real thing? Is that a real thing? Like wait, I just rolled doubles like four times in a row. That's something, I guess. We got phasing, which I actually don't like, so let's roll again. One in three is anti-magic. Now, you know what? This is good enough. I think this is good enough. I think uh, we'll go with this. Platypus poison. That's terrifying. Wait, I'm going to search this up. Platypus. Okay. Male platypus on their hind feet have poison spurs. Is that right? Oh, it is right. I'm kind of looking at it right now. Platypus poison. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay. Interesting. All right. Okay. Let's do some platypi? Platypus? Let's do Let's draw platypus. Okay. Uh, I think for this one, I'm going to have him be upright. Or her. Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's draw a platypus with wings that is fungal. How the fuck am I going to draw that? <laughs> uh, wait, uh, so, um, 
Okay, we have to figure this out. Um, I think the fungal part is gonna be on its head, maybe like. Wait, let me let me think about this. Maybe the beak is a fungus. Will that even work? Do you think? No, that won't work. I think what I I think I got an idea. I think I'm gonna do it like this. So it's gonna be like a fungus head, right? And then I'm gonna do this, and then there's gonna be like a platypus kind of like beak coming out from it, and it's gonna be like that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Then we're gonna do like that. There's the eyes there, and it's kind of like doing this, and there's like multiple mushrooms growing out of it. So it's like there's there's that, then there's that, right? And like kind of make it like that, and uh, wings, 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 wings. Uh, we'll like maybe make it more vertical. I'm gonna try to restrict us to like the edges of the paper here. So let's go with, like let's go with, like Dracula wings, where it's kind of all encompassing here. I think that'll be cool. The classic fungal look, yeah. It's like some Last of Us shit. Wait, you literally just wrote that. I I swear I didn't read that before I said that. Um, yeah, we were both thinking about Last of Us whenever. Uh, I guess fungal stuff came up. Uh, let's see. We could do like uh, I think two fungi. Two mushrooms are enough, but gotta do the wings here as well. Oh, this is kind of creepy, but okay. Uh, alright. There we go. Uh, I think we're gonna have like his claws kind of like this. Uh, kind of like, yeah. I wonder if I can... Like that? Is that a bit too cute? That's fine. Yeah, let's maybe maybe less than like, like like that. All right, let's just do it like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like this. Okay, go like that. The wings can kind of like envelop him like that. Um, and then how's he gonna stand up? Actually, we'll do like we'll do like this. We'll do like that. Like big fat feet. <laughs> this is so stupid looking. This is this is pretty dumb looking. I think the the wings probably need to uh not wrap around his body that much. Like maybe maybe it's like that. Right? Yeah, yeah, like 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 that. Like that that like this one is fine. Um this one could like kind of wrap around a bit more. This one can wrap around a bit more, but this one kind of goes out like that so that I can show its belly. <laughs> this is hilarious. Okay, uh, you know what? Um, I'm thinking like maybe making it look a bit creepier. We could do like maybe. Um, I think like the fungi growing off his head. I want to make that like multiple fungi. So well, mushrooms. Fungi? Mushrooms? I've made multiple adventures based off like um fungi and mycelium and mushrooms and I still don't really know how they work. I was watching a documentary about them actually and like apparently they can work as like communication networks for um trees and stuff and it's it's insane. I love learning about stuff like that. All right, let's let's do a few maybe. Um, I don't know if that's better or worse. It's kind of stupid looking, but I'm kind of into it. Um, but I still want, still want the silhouette to be fairly well defined, I guess. Okay, let's do something like that. Yeah, let's. Kind of do something like this. And like that. Like that. I think this is good. Yeah, I think like this in general is fine. Um, Maybe one more mushroom, but that might be too much. Let's try it. Let's like do one more mushroom and see whether that works. You know what? You know what? I think that does work. Let's go for that. Okay. 
This kind of looks stupid. That's fine. Okay, let's uh, do... Hmm, I'm trying to think like, how can I make this a lot grosser? Because of course, that's my goal, right? Make it a lot more disgusting for whatever reason. I think... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the veins of the mushrooms kind of go into... Yeah, he doesn't. they don't have eyes. They don't have eyes. The veins kind of like cover the eyes like that. You see that? Look at that. Oh, yeah. I like that. And then something like that. Mm, yeah, I think like this mushroom here... I know we're spending a lot of time on the on the sketching phase here, but I feel like this mushroom here could maybe pop out a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's real disgusting. Okay. Alright, I think we're ready actually. I think this is good enough. Maybe the eye could be like popping out of here. Like kind of just... Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh boy all right let's let's do like uh yeah let's cover up the other part here uh okay, give it a bit of a chest there give it a, bit of a pot belly and i think we're ready to start inking all right uh posca marker um actually for the previous one right did i yeah, I started from the like the dark area, so look, we're we're gonna do that again. Let's do that. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna just start here, and then we're just gonna just go for it. Oh. I feel like that fear of failure is still something that I'm trying to overcome in a lot of like my daily stuff. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So whenever I get the idea to do something, I'll just try to make myself just go for it, you know, uh, and not hesitate too much. Because if I hesitate, I'll just never do it. If you catch my drift, kind of Cthulhu-esque. Yeah, it does kind of, it is kind of Cthulhu-esque for some reason. I think it's the, the veins under. Not sure. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna like change this up a little bit. Let's like do that. Uh yeah. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color the wings dark, completely dark, just to give it some contrast. Yeah, I I, I think that that'll be for the best. Also, why am I wearing this earpiece? When uh, there's no sounds coming through my computer, I don't know what I was doing there. Okay, we'll do that. Okay, that looks pretty alright to me. Okay, I think I messed this up a little bit. But that's okay. Uh, I have a fix for that. And I'll show you guys the fix later on if I can't salvage this like the th this part here has a bit too much dark i feel like let's see having the eye socket uh visible will definitely make it creepier like the creature is alive but controlled by fungus yeah i decided to go for an in-between where it's kind of like partially visible like you can kind of see it like poking out there yeah 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 platypus let's go with that um Let's like have like the veins kind of poking through the beak as well. Kind of like that, like strands of it kind of just poking through. Let's do like a bit of the fur over here. And like that. Okay. So I mentioned earlier about how I I'm given to like perfectionistic tendencies and how it kind of is hard for me to just jump into things. Uh, what I find helps is if I have like a, you know, a backup plan if things go wrong. 
And the backup plan for this particular thing is this thing, which I'm going to show right now. This is a white gel pen. If I mess up too badly, I'll use this to modify certain parts. Of course, I can't like undo like entire sections, but you know, it does help if like I made one part a bit too dark or I overlap something wrong or, you know, whatever. You kind of have to wait for it to dry before you apply it, but should be okay. Kind of do something like that there. I like that. Uh, yeah, let's start drawing the mushroom caps, I guess. Let's do like that. So I would like highly recommend if you're getting into ink artwork to get um white gel pen. You could of course use like friction markers and like uh, be able to erase them out and stuff. But I find that they're not as dark and uh, when you're scanning them in, uh, it can kind of make it look worse. So nowadays I don't use uh, my friction pens for artwork. Also uh, because they're not really archivable, you can kind of um, put them out in the sun and they can disappear. For those of you who don't know, friction pens are like uh, these erasable ink pens that I do use for a lot of my videos and stuff because it's a lot easier to see on the camera. But for actual like artwork, uh, I tend not to use them. If it's just a draft, then yeah, I, I might use them. But in general, I try not to use them for most of my artwork nowadays. I'll just use a normal ink pen for that. I'll do like, uh, yeah, let's go like that. And okay. So a bit of drawing advice, I guess. Uh, when you're doing like this kind of hatching stuff, um, be sure to hatch it around the form. Be sure to have like a 3D image in your head of how the form looks and hatch around that. So you see all everything that I hatched, I hatched around a certain like 3D form. And that's what gives it that pop, I feel. Also, um, let me take this a bit. Sometimes it goes out ink. There you go. Um, okay, that looks good. Give me a bit of a belly here. There we go. And yeah, this part always like um, messes with me, like the legs in particular, because animals have like really strange legs sometimes. I'm looking at you horses and anything with hind legs. Uh, so like shed, like drawing the shadow for it always kind of messes me up sometimes. Uh, let's see. We need one more mushroom up there. So let's draw that. And I don't think any of this has dried fully. So I'm trying not to touch any of the marker stuff while I'm doing this as carefully as I can anyway. Okay. Yeah, having that that top one like have a little bit of a peaked cap, I think is nice. Let's do. Oh, you know what would be cool? Um, if like the wings had some. I was thinking of a mushroom cap, but I think that's too much. No, that's that's a bit too much. Let's just not do that. Okay. I also struggle with perfectionism too. Can be debilitating when trying something new. Yeah, like the way I tend to approach perfectionism at least in terms of fixing it, is I pre crapify it. Or I, you know, like if I'm approaching something new, I mess up on purpose. I will actually like tend to release things and it will just be bad. And I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll make it clear that, oh, I'm, I'm new to this thing. But I will always, when I'm getting into something, try to release something and show the world that I'm crappy at it. Because I feel like perfectionism, at least for me, a lot of the time it can stem from trying to please people. 
that's for me. That might not be the case for everybody else. But for me, it stems from a bit of that. So if I just disappoint people up front, then it's all good. You know? That's honestly a good way to handle it. I have to constantly remind myself that my sketchbook is for making mistakes and learning. That's a good point. Uh, let me show you something. Let me see if I can find it. Let's take a quick break from this. Because uh, uh, this is an important topic. My sketchbook on the front of it, it literally says bad ideas only. And I made this sketchbook from just regular paper. I um, hand stitched it together. It's a double signature pamphlet bind, uh, pamphlet stitch, sorry. So you can kind of see that through here and kind of like see through it. And it's just already crappy. So I, I don't care about crappifying it because it's already been crappified. Otherwise, I won't draw in it for fear of things not being perfect. Yeah, I would recommend a video uh, by Matt Crow called The Perfect Sketchbook, in which he states that the perfect sketchbook is one where you can draw in it and that you aren't debilitated um, by perfectionism. And in order to do that, his you know, his technique for that is just make a crappy sketchbook. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean it has to be like ugly or anything, but it, you know, just have something with mistakes already in there. I find that that helps for me at least. I've watched that video many times. I think it's quite powerful. Like knowing that you're going to mess up gives you essentially superpowers because if you know you're going to mess up, you're not afraid of messing up because it's an eventuality you just tell yourself i'm gonna mess up it's gonna be fine life goes on um that was part of the thing when i was like starting streaming i was like really afraid um about like you know messing up and i'm like you know what that's probably why i should be doing it um this way because if i know that i'm gonna mess up if I know I'm going to say um and ah and, you know, maybe say some stuff that I'm going to regret and I don't have the ability to pull the VOD down like I do on Twitch, I feel like that will be better for me because I'll learn to actually accept my mistakes. So that's why, that's part of the reason why I started streaming on YouTube, actually. At least, the main reason is uh, because of the ads. It's a lot easier to vlog ads on YouTube. Yo, that's cool. Uh, I need to try my hand and map and making one by hand. I think I saw that very map crow video. Yeah, it's quite easy to make. Um, you don't even need a long arm stapler. He uses a long arm stapler in his video, but there is a method for doing it where you can actually just use a regular stapler, right? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna explain this very badly, but you have a regular stapler, you have a eraser like this underneath it, and then you just staple through. Um, I don't have a stapler on hand, but you just staple through, and then you like just pry out the stapler afterwards, and that will that kind of makes it so that you don't need a long arm stapler, which I think most people don't have. I have one, but that's because I make a lot of zines. I will say though that if you um make a lot of uh handmade zines and stuff. It is a very wise investment to get a long arm stapler because they're fairly cheap and uh, you'll use you'll get a lot of use out of it. So a quick good fix. Yeah, I don't know if I got have a video on hand showing how to do it. But if you just search, I think like um, stapler, eraser, long arm, you'll probably find something that discusses how to use that method i know horoscope zine uses that method yeah horoscope zine does use that method so uh, if you go to horoscope zine's youtube channel there is um there are some videos on uh zine making and he discusses how to use the well, he, he died i don't think he has a long arm stapler so he does the thing where he uses a regular stapler and a razor and I've learned a lot of like DIY tricks from that channel. It's an amazing channel. Like, I don't know, there's so many underrated channels out there. Like, Itakos' channel, I think, is very underrated. Um, the Lone... Sorry. Uh, I'm trying to remember the exact name of it so I don't mess it up. Let me see. 
the solo dungeon crawler. Yeah, that's right. Solo dungeon crawler, a solitary RPG, um, lone adventurer. There are a bunch of like really underrated channels out there. Bandit keep, uh, you know. Find that a lot of these lesser known channels are also a lot more authentic, which I really do appreciate. Uh, I find that I tend to not watch a lot of the high production uh, RPG stuff anymore. I'll give that method a try. I'm interested in trying to make zines. Um, I might make a video on how to construct zines, like simple methods for them but like um generally the simplest method will be to use the the stapler thing yeah if it's a larger zine you normally want to stitch bind it which can be a bit of a pain if you don't like it i i generally do like i i like the process of like stitching together my own zine but i know some people are not big fans of that can be quite meditative but yeah is essentially like actual book binding where i shouldn't say actual book binding but it's more complex book binding is more involved yeah trying to make zines is like really uh really addictive i think especially when making your own i think one day i would like to make a video on this channel if i can of um just making a zine through just completely analog means like no computer, no nothing, just, you know, drawing the whole thing by hand. And I've done that before, but I've never, like, I don't think I've recorded it, per se. Okay. So this turned out fine. I don't think I need to use the, the trick that I was talking about, where I used the white gel pen or the white gel roller pen. Uh, I think this looks pretty good. I actually like it more than the previous one. Uh, if there's anything I would change, I'll maybe make them in a more action-y pose. But then again, for minis, sometimes you don't want that. Uh, okay, let's see. Let's see the previous one, actually, again. Try not to. Hmm... I feel like this one doesn't have enough like dark values now because I think this one is very easy to kind of like tell what's going on. I feel like this one doesn't have enough like completely dark values, so I might go back and fix that. But for now, let's keep going. We have limited time and we gotta keep making minis. So let's make um I was aiming for four, but we make might make three. I'm not sure. I'm not completely sure. We'll we'll see. We'll see how tired I get after one more. <laughs> um, and I'll put this up for free. I'll, I'll like make the templates. Uh, not not template. I'll put up the minis for free on my itch. I think. Or somewhere else. I'll, or I'll make more before I do that. I don't know. I'll see. Uh, let's go for Monsters and Animals. And let's make us another monster. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Four is a terrestrial monster. Okay. Five and three. That will be a scorpion. Hell yes. Oh, I love, I love scorpions. They're so weird. Uh, scorpion. Actually, all of these were fairly strange, but scorpion. Features. Uh, tree tree. Uh, that's going to be many eyed scorpion. Oh yes, oh yes. Yo, let's go! Yes, I love drawing bugs. Tree tree again. Um, that's fungal again. <laughs> okay, I, as much as I love the idea of a fungal scorpion, I'm gonna reroll that. Four, why do you keep rolling doubles? Four four. Um, that's gonna be luminous. Okay, I don't, I don't like the idea of luminous because it's hard to portray that in a. In a mini. I like the idea of a luminous scorpion, but I keep rolling the same thing. Five five. Why am I rolling doubles all the time? I'm cursed. Holy shit. Five five. Um shadowy. That will that, that can work. I I think I like that, yeah. Shadowy. Uh whoa. Hello, hello, Pigus. 
Did something just fall? Oh my god. I found the token that I was trying to find um uh underneath my table for like an hour and I just found it because I just hit my leg into it. Um Oh wait, give, give me one second. I just I knew. Oh my god. Okay. There you are. That's the token I was trying to find for a while. I just hit my leg into it. Alright, Shadowy, what else? Um what else do we got? Yeah, Shadowy can work with Posca, I think so. Let's do monster abilities. Uh five and four. That is going to be shape shifting. I like I, I love that. I oh oh that's oh that's good. Oh that's good, that's good. I think this is gonna be real fun. Okay, I, I think we got enough. That's good. That's good. That's so good. That's like I'm I'm imagining like a many eyed Like have you guys watched the anime Helsing? I'm thinking of that right now. Like uh you know when Alucard um does that like shadowy thing where half of his face go turns into darkness and like eyes pop out of it thinking something like that like, like a scorpion right so we're gonna search up well i'm gonna search up scorpion on google just so i don't mess this up too badly the problem is how am i gonna fit it onto a miniature i guess i kind of want it standing up so it's like hmm i kind of want to like okay this is what i want to do i want the, I want the stinger to be here right and kind of going like that you know what I mean? Like something like that. Right? And then like and like shadowy, right? With many eyes. So I'm thinking like the eyes are like here. Like that. Like like that. And like that. Like each segment has an eye. And then uh what I was thinking was is shape shifting, right? So it's like um I'm thinking like it's kinda since it's shadowy and shape shifting, it's like kind of like this shadowy goo. Or shadowy flames. I can't really tell what it is. And it's kind of doing that. I think that'll be cool. Clev is standing or climbing a top. Oh! That's a good idea. Um, do, do we want that as part of the... Of the mini though? Like, I'm not sure. I'm not... I'm not sure. Let, let's see if we can do that without... Let's see if we can like make a nice silhouette without doing that. If we can't, we might do the rock thing, but I, I I like this a lot. This many eyes. So like I think I think like on its on, on here. I think I'm gonna do a human face on, on, on the section on here. Right? Okay, I'm gonna do like 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 a, almost like a skull. Yeah. Yeah, I know that's okay, you know. I like that. So it's like shape shifting. It's like a skull on here. Right? And it's kinda of like doing that. Oh yes. I don't think we uh yeah, I I I I like the like tall rock or column idea. But I think with the skull there, I think we have enough of a nice silhouette. Let's do like the legs as well, like that. Um. Hmm. Yeah, actually, the thing is, I wanted to be flat, right? Because. Because it's a mini. Hmm. Maybe the tall rock will actually work. Or or I could like up the I could maybe up the inserts a bit like that. Oh wait, no, I got an idea. I got an idea. I got an idea. It's like I I, I got an idea. It's it's like shape shifting, right? It's shape shifting, and it has all these like weird little tendrils coming out of it and stuff like that, right? So uh, what what about this, right? Um, I got an idea here. What about if it was like just a skull here, right? And then like uh the pincers were like coming up in the air. Like 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 I'm trying to figure out how to do this. Like this. 
Oh, wait, I, I miss Rex Fjell's uh, comment. I love Helsing. Is the anime that got me into anime? Same, same. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true for me also. It's very cheesy. It's very cheesy. But I do like it because of that. Alright, let's do like... Uh, yeah. Oh, look at how metal that is. Okay, I think we need to make it flat, so... We'll try to like, try to make it, I'll, I'll try to like, make it kind of like resting here and like that, right? That. Kind of like that. Like that. And. Maybe one of them is kind of coming out more. Yeah, I think one of them coming out more is a good idea there. And I think that's where it's gonna be the base and i think that's that's a good start i think that's a good start okay we got the eyes here okay just kind of make it a bit more pronounced okay all right i what do you guys think what do you guys think I'm thinking like the whole thing should be black apart from like this area here. You know what? I'm going to color the whole thing black and then I'm going to show you guys the white gel pen thing. All right. Getting late at night. Got to call it here. Some great work. Thank you so much for coming in. I always appreciate it. Thank you, Rexville. Hope you have a great night's sleep. Okay. Uh, here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to, for the small details, I'm going to use the white gel roller ink pen thing um but for most of it i'm just gonna like color it in using a posca and we're gonna see if that works uh so yeah we're just gonna like literally just color the whole thing in kind of see if that works i always wanted to like do a really dark ink drawing but a lot of the materials that i use are like quite um i i, I guess you could say like they are slightly thinner in terms of the ink so it does become hard to use it for that but with such a like bold kind of tip at the end of this makes it really easy to do these like large fills which is very nice very fun very fun so like this section here uh, um, I think I'm gonna use like, a white gel pen kind of drive home the point there that there is like some kind of form yay look at that i might actually like just fill it all in like like so uh i love the creature skull for the body where do you think this creature will reside or hunt this is a good question i was actually thinking while i was like rolling this up that it it resides in like people's nightmares that's like my first thought, like a shadowy beast of some kind. It's like, I, I was reading this book, right, called Between Two Fires. And there was like a section, it's like a biblical horror kind of book. And there was this section where uh, this goo-like thing that uh, is, you know, implied to be some kind of demon uh, who like tempts people in their dreams. Um, basically almost tempts the main protagonist to do something really really horrible that i don't even want to get into on here um but yeah i was thinking of like something like that where it's like this goo kind of creature who like tempts people in their dreams to do stuff that's horrible uh, because like while he was doing the thing in the dream he was actually doing it in real life as well yo hello casper hello welcome welcome we're drawing a shadowy scorpion shapeshifter many-eyed thing that's right we're doing it uh let's see let's go with that after this i'm gonna go back in with a white gel pen and kind of like fill in the gaps and uh form and all that stuff but i gotta wait for it to, gotta wait for it to dry i think before i can do any of that But yeah, we're approaching this 
particular drawing a little bit differently from how we've approached the other drawings thus far. Uh, we're not like actually drawing the detail on the thing itself. We're gonna apply the detail separately afterwards. Okay, there you go. Yo, welcome. Welcome to the street. I wanted to do like some really like hyped up streamer voice thing, but I can't do it. I, I can't do it. I feel like even though I was, I've been streaming on Twitch before this for quite some time, I never got used to the concept of like, of streaming, I guess. I, I don't know. Like I, I, I was telling the story, like I think, um, on the previous stream on here. But there were times uh, when I was like doing game development where there will be um, like massive amounts of people in the chat, sometimes up to like a hundred. And I felt like I was going to get a panic attack at some points because like there are so many people and I couldn't keep track of every single person. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I do like like more cozy streams where it's like, you know, just a people hanging out, having fun. I think, uh, I'm not the sort who is able to handle crowds of more than like 30. <laughs> That's kind of terrifying to me. Uh, all right, there we go. I do like that. So I think I'm gonna, there's more coming out from there and this uh, particular drawing and this uh, this particular um drawing right now i think it doesn't have the same gravitas as the previous drawings but wait till we get a gel marker in then it might look a lot better i'm not sure if it will but i think it will um right now it kind of looks kind of meh but that's because there's no detail there, I think. I think that the like the the silhouette already kind of speaks for itself. So I think that's good. That's a good step. The right direction. What a great wait. Yo! Hello! Another great I was gonna say streamer. Another great YouTuber joins us. Hello, Caverna. Uh so for those who don't know, Caverna does um Solo RPG videos and fantastic ones at that. Uh, their video on Obsidian actually helped me a lot, like getting started with that kind of thing. To the point that like I took it a step further and I actually wrote a bunch of scripts for Obsidian uh, in order to do like inline scripting and all that stuff. Like I used the inline scripting system of Obsidian and wrote a JavaScript interpreter that was allowed that allowed me to like read random tables and stuff like that, like automatically. But I got my start with like configuring Obsidian and all that through his video. So yeah, welcome, welcome. Oh man. Okay. Uh. I think this is. This is good. Yeah, so uh, for those who just joined us, we're randomly generating like monsters off maze rats and then we're drawing them. Uh, these are the ones we previously did. We did this one and we did this one. <laughs> I, li I like the, I don't know, this cracks me up. But uh, yeah, we're drawing a shadowy scorpion thing now. Yeah, it definitely helped. Yeah. Gotta get the ink out there. Your drawings are so cool. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Cool. Yeah. I I I I think the I think the platypus one is kind of strange in a good way. I kind of I'm I kind of digging it. I'm kind of like into it. It's uh it's very it's very comic booky, which I guess is not my regular style. Is it? I'm not sure. It's a lot of bold lines, which, uh, I don't know, for, for me, I think uh, my style, I, I came from a painting background, you see, so, 
generally speaking, I tend to like try build up stuff. I don't try to have like these really bold lines. But this kind of forces me to do that, which I like. I like a lot. Like it forces me to just go in there and make like these really bold strokes. Which is honestly the best way if you're like trying to learn thumbnailing or composition or anything like that. Like just have something where you're forced to essentially draw very bold shapes. Not necessarily strokes, but like shapes like this. Where you can immediately tell, like even if I showed you this from afar, you can tell what it is. So here's the fun part. Uh, this was not the fun part. I mean, it was fairly fun, but the real fun part is, is it dry yet? I think it's dry. Gel pen time. Okay. Um, okay, I need to make sure that this actually, okay, because um, what this does, actually I'll show it right now. Like, see it? It's essentially a correction tip. Um, so we're going to use that for this. Uh, where are we going to start, actually? Let's start with the eyes here. Oh, man. It's a bit clogged up, though. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So now I'm able to actually do some amount of detail here and there. I feel like I should have maybe filled the whole thing in perfectly black if I'm going to do this, but that's okay. If I need to, I'll just fill in certain parts. Okay. Look at that! It already pops it out a lot more. Kind of have to shake it. And then... There we go. Yeah! I love, I love adding these highlights. They're so satisfying to add. Look at that! Uh, drawing is so cool. I, I, I don't know, like... Um, so recently, uh, for those of you who don't know, I used to be um, a video game programmer, and I used to make, like, solo... Uh, video game solo. And I'll, like, actually stream a lot of the development on Twitch and stuff. Um, I'd stream myself programming, essentially, because I program pretty fast, uh, I think. Um, so I actually did a, sw a career switch to art, essentially. And I was like, man, I'm a bit worried about this because I, I felt like if I'm going to do art as a career thing, right, I wouldn't like making art for myself anymore because that's kind of what happened with video games, I guess. Like, I, because I was, like, doing it all of the time for my work stuff, I didn't feel as inclined to make personal games for myself anymore. But that's not really the case with art. It kind of didn't happen at all, actually. I, I, I still, I, I think it, it actually improved my ability to enjoy uh, drawing stuff for myself even more. Uh, and it just gave me an excuse to like um, improve my skill set as well. So that's really nice. I don't know, just like uh, switching over from video games to RPGs has been like a really positive thing for me, I think. It's been like super positive. Everybody's like so nice. I get to work with the coolest people. Um, and because I draw fairly fast, it is like quite sustainable as well. So I'm, I'm just like, I couldn't, I, 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 I couldn't be in a happier spot, I guess. Um, the only problem remaining being my health issues, which are slowly actually being fixed up as well. So it's fantastic. All right, there we go. Yeah, look at that. Adding some definition. Uh, we could do, I think I'm looking at the, I'm looking at it and I'm like, we could do some more definition on the clause there. But should we, okay, uh, what do you guys think of this? Should we put the pupils for the eyes or should we just leave it empty? I'm thinking, I'm not sure actually. I'm not sure. What do you guys think? Uh, let me try somewhere else. There we go. 
Okay, I think that's enough detail there. Um, but should we draw the pupils for the eyes or not? If we do, I'm going to use my brush pen because that's going to be quite delicate. Uh, he is right-handed, the left hand is a bit weak. Uh, yeah, that's true. I didn't... I didn't like add enough definition to the left side. You're right. Let me just fix that real quick. Uh, is that better? I think it is. Yeah, there we go. Thank you for pointing that out. I think people's for the tail eyes. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think for just just for the tail eyes. Add pupils looks too empty otherwise. Let's try. Yeah, let, let's do it. Actually, we can test it. Yeah, that's that's a good point because uh, we have the gel ink roller thing. Okay, should we just do it like that, or should we fill it in? Let's try filling it in. Oh yeah, no, no, I like that. I like that. Okay, we're we're gonna make it kind of like looking downwards as we go, like like that. Yes, yes, yes. Cut to like the M. Bison meme of like the guy going yes. <laughs> that is fun. That is fun. I think yeah, like for the for the skull eyes, I wouldn't add it, but I want to add a bit of definition to the skull there. Creepy beast. It is kind of creepy, isn't it? I kind of want a bit, just a bit more definition on the skull there. Maybe I could like use the gel roller for that. Looks like something from Kingdom Death. Oh yeah, I can see that. Okay, we can kind of do that. Okay. By the way, I'm trying to. I'm thinking of like getting into war games. So I know like some of you, uh, like Takos Bin has like videos on war games and stuff. Do you guys have any recommendations for like maybe you've been playing some and you enjoy them or whatever? Uh, yeah, what, what do you guys like think about war games in general and solo war games? Because I know there's like um, Forbidden Psalm, Five Leagues from the Borderlands, Five Fire Sex from Home. There's also like Dungeon Scum, which is by Nordic Weasel as well. And... Um, but I, other than those and, and Rangers of Shadow Deep, I don't really know of that many others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five Leagues from the Borderlands is, I think, um, the one that everybody points to for fantasy solo uh, adventures, which is, I've tried it. It's really fun. It's, it's really good. Um, the problem, I think, is like, I, I have to kind of do it digitally. Like, I have to do it digitally because I don't have the desk space for it. Um, I'm trying to figure out a way to do it physically, but for now, I kind of have to just, you know, use, um, either Clip Studio Pin or something else. Forbidden Psalm is good, but too simple. Yeah, I think Forbidden Psalm actually shines the most, in my opinion, um, when it's played versus, which I don't see a lot of people doing. But when I played versus, it's really fun. I know, um... Itakos has like a series on Forbidden Psalm uh, where he just like gets very bad rolls and almost dies. <laughs> I think on like the second episode or first episode. Um... There we go. Look at that. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Okay, we got this guy done. We got this guy done. And we got this guy done. Oh, <laughs> man, this this looks so stupid. Like, the way that it's, like, holding its arms up in the air, it's, like, it's so dumb. It's really great to be able to, like, chat with you guys, though. Like, uh, I've, I've been watching your content for a while, and it's just really great to be able to talk to you guys. Um... Actually, do you guys like have any, uh, I wonder if there's like, uh, hmm. Yeah, I was thinking about this recently. I was wondering whether there's any way for like some of the solo YouTubers on, solo RPG YouTubers on, 
I was gonna say solo RPG YouTubers on YouTube because I'm trying to hatch this while talking. But yeah, I was thinking of like how to collaborate. Um or like possibly collaborate with like maybe solitary RPG or you guys or something else. And I was trying to think of like a project which will be suitable for that. And I can't think of anything. But I would love to in the future because I think um it's a great way to like have fun with other creators and also to highlight each other's channels and you know the main thing is to be like having fun uh i know that there's this channel called solo gurps he's the guy who made um the hex crawl modification for bfrpg who was doing a solo west marches hex crawl where everybody did their own solo hex crawling and then they combined it into one map. And I was like, that's so cool. I started YouTubing recently. Oh, nice. What kind of content do you do? Do you do uh, like the uh, same stuff, kind of stuff that uh, I was talking about? Or Oh, hello, Riz. Hello, welcome to the stream. Okay, we have done three creatures so far. We have done... Uh, oh, that's, that's not a creature that we just did. But that, that's a creature for uh, like a job that I'm doing. Uh, we have done this thing. Uh, this. I feel like I should have made it standing up, but oh well, whatever. Uh, we have done the armadillo, the platypus, and we have done shadow scorpion. Uh, five leagues slash parsecs are great for narrative campaign. Vered Wood. I have never heard of Vered Wood at all. And I've actually done quite a bit of research into this. I'm going to search it up right now. Vered Wood. Solo play my own mini RPGs and drawings. Okay, I'm gonna bring up your YouTube channels just so I can remind myself to watch some of it because I'm always on the lookout for for more content to watch in that regard. Let me see. Dungeon of Doom. Ooh, nice. So let me put this on my watch later. West March's solo shared world sounds quite cool. Yeah, I wonder if we could actually pull that off. Um, but like, it, like everybody can use their own systems and stuff. Like they, they can use whatever they want essentially. Barret Wood is a grim, dark fantasy miniatures agnostic skirmish game. So, ah, I found it on War Games Vault. Oh, this is cool. Thank you, Tequus. I, I, I didn't know about this one. Full horror skirmish game. That sounds cool. Yeah, I'm still learning, but it's really nice if I need if I need to fall asleep. Um. Wait, what do you mean by that? <laughs> I, I think I kind of just just like um my my mind just like. I I I didn't I don't quite understand what you're saying. Like the solo RPG stuff is uh, like good for falling asleep too, or like, or like. It's relaxing to play the solo RPGs before you fall asleep, or. Uh, but I I find that it's good for both actually. So, uh, they are so long and unedited. Ah, okay, yeah. Verdwood perfect for bestiarum, Dark Souls, and Mark Borg as minis. I really want to get some bestiarum miniatures, Itaquis, and I I think I got introduced to bestiarum through your channel. Did I? I'm not sure. But I remember watching some videos on your channel about it, and um, I was I was I was just saying that like last night I was like loading up the cart with like miniatures. And I was like, uh, do I really want to buy all this? And it's still in the cart, so I I might still buy it. But um, I don't have a three D printer, so it's a bit more expensive to just like get it printed from only games, you know. Uh, okay, cool. Well, let's do one more. Um, or we can stop here, I guess. I have a few ideas to bring solo YouTubers together. I'm still working on it. I will contact you as soon as I have more mature. Not sure if that's the right word. Yeah, you know what? You know what? Um, do you have a Discord or anything? Um, that I can add you on? Um, let me see. Let me open up my Discord. Oh, we're doing networking. We're networking. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. 
we're doing uh yeah we're 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 definitely networking right now which i don't know how i feel about that but we're doing it i did you already oh oh you did okay give me a second wait did you you did i i don't okay my, my memory is terrible so you probably did but i don't see it oh well we'll figure this out months ago i'm so sorry my my memory is absolutely god awful um that's kind of embarrassing oh well like this okay let me see this gotcha Oh, oh, we never talked on Discord, but you added me. Okay, 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 there we go. Got it. Nice. Okay, okay, thank you. <laughs> Apologies for that. Uh, let's do one final drawing. Okay, how about we do, like, this final drawing um, with you guys giving me your choice of the monster. I think that'll be fun. Yeah, I think that'll be fun. Why not? Uh, let's do... Let's do, uh, let's just, let me just open, I guess, to the monsters and animals part. And, uh, you guys shout out whatever monster trait or feature or ability that you want. And I'll just combine them all into some horrible abomination. I think that'll be fun. So, uh, let me, let me zoom this out a little bit just to, there we go. Okay. Take, ah, I hit the hit the camera whoops can you guys see this it is a shame that i need to go now in between me things i'll come back as soon as possible actually we're gonna end soon actually uh this is like the final drawing so so it's, it's perfectly fine thank you for dropping by i really like uh really enjoy talking to you um actually thank thanks to all of you for uh, dropping by it's uh it means a lot to me i I just enjoy doing these kind of streams and like, yeah, it's, it's real fun. Bloated and stealthy. Oh, hello, Matthew. I have to go to work. When do you stream next time? I'm probably going to try streaming like, um, maybe three times a week. I'm, I'm trying to do that, but I don't think I want to schedule it just because I have some intermittent health problems and, um, scheduling it means I might have to cancel some of them, but I'm trying to stream as often as I can, usually a bit earlier than this time, I guess. Bloated and stealthy is good. Um, somebody needs to tell me a base, uh, like a terrestrial animal or aerial or like what kind of like base animal do you guys want? Then we'll use the bloated and stealthy. Snake cannibal. All right. All right. Let's go with that. Let's go with that. Okay. S cannibal snake eating itself, I think. Bloated. Stealthy is maybe a bit hard. Okay, we got squirrel. So we're going to have a squirrel snake eating itself. <laughs> this is going to be a bit hard. This is going to be a bit... This is going to be a bit um, hard to do. Uh, let's see. Squirrel. Okay. I'm going to search up squirrel. I'm going to search up snake. <laughs> Good luck with that. Bye. See ya. See ya. Thank you so much for dropping by. Owl. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. I um. I'm gonna have to combine a squirrel, a snake, an owl, and make it bloated. I'll figure out something. I'll figure out something. Give me a second. I could just combine them into like chimera form, right? That's that's acceptable, right? That's not cheating. <laughs> snake, squirrel, owl. Yeah, I know. Like um. Okay. I I I know. I got it. I got it. We'll take the like big eyes from the owl, right? Like that, right? We'll we'll have like a squirrel, um. Shit, <laughs> damn it! Okay, we'll have like a squirrel like kind of thing here going on, right? Like like that. Yeah, we'll like have squirrel ears, and like uh, like that. Yeah, like kind of kind of like that. We'll do something like this, all right? And then we'll have a snake body somehow. Oh no! No, I, I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know what to do. We'll have like a snake teeth, like that, like, like viperous. Oh, that's terrifying. That's horrifying. Owl with a snake body with an appetite of a squirrel. No, I'm thinking. I'm thinking like like um. So I got an owl eyes here, right? 
Okay, wait. Can I get the? Um... Okay, let's let's do like like that, and then like uh, like snake body, essentially like like that. And then like bloated up and corpulent and uh we have the wings as well <laughs> oh my god this is uh this is something this is uh this is probably the most terrifying one i've drawn today so thanks guys uh oh uh, wait a squirrel with owl eyes and snake tongue yes yes yes, yes. snake tongue is required i think By the way, uh, Attack was. Do you have like a Discord or anything like that? Would love to get in touch with you if possible. Definitely a boss creature. I think so too. Let's let's see if like can we make the like, the snake kind of like okay. Let's like have it be feathery on the outside and like reptilian on the inside. Yeah, and then there's like the these things here. Okay, how does it move though? Like, does it have um? Feet? Maybe? I don't know. Like, does it have feet? <laughs> that's so stupid looking. Okay, no, I, I like that. No, let's go with that. Yeah, no, that's... That's good. That's good. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. I think this is good enough. Um, We can start to ink it out already. Nope, still trying to figure out how to stream with cameras and software. I'm a tech idiot. Oh, maybe I can help you out with that sometime because um, I'm a tech guy, I guess. I mean, I do have a degree in computer science and I do I did make my own video games in the past. So I guess I can say that. Can I? I guess so. But I can help you out with that uh, like uh, if you need if you need any like uh, advice or anything. Um, don't know how I'd contact you for that though. <laughs> but yeah, if, if you if you need any help with it, just hit me up, I guess. Uh hey, there we go. Let's do like some let's, let's do that. Yeah. It slithers, it flies, it eats up all your full year stock of acorns. I kind of want to put an acorn like right in its mouth. But also, um, the uh, the owl eyes I think are a bit too cute, so I'm gonna make it like just like that for now, like that, and like that. Yes, yes. This is very stupid. Okay, uh, time to ink it out. Uh, okay, this is the last one, so I gotta make it count. Uh, let's go with the eyes first. Let's go with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the stuff. Alright, there we go. Put it out like that. Uh, okay, I think that's good. Yeah, okay, nice. Uh, I think this might be the my favorite um creature concept out of all the ones we've made today. And it's because of teamwork and friendship that we have made this thing. This horrible, horrible abomination. Fantastic. Uh, we need a tongue of some kind. Um, do like that, I guess. And get it like that. Okay. This is so horrifying. It's snake body like a flying squirrel and flaps his wing. I should I make it flap his wings wait, 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 before we get into um. I kind of like that idea, like it's actually like, you know, flapping his wings. So actually I'm going to change that, yeah. I'm going to do that, like like flying squirrel, right? Like maybe, 
Yeah, uh, wait, let me search up a playing squirrel. Oh, okay, I got it. That's so stupid. No, that's too stupid. That, no, that's too stupid. That that is too stupid. I don't. I don't. I think that's a bit too dumb. So I think we have to actually make the wings a bit larger if we're gonna do that, because that that is a bit too much. Like there's a point where it's there. There is a point where it gets too stupid. I think. And I think we've reached that point. So. I am actually going to make the wings a bit larger, just so it's a bit more intimidating. It's still stupid, but you know. Um, do like that. Okay, there we go. Okay, I think that's good. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, so future plans for the channel, uh, I will be, like I said, I'll be streaming fairly often. I think I'll start doing the solo RPG series on the, on the live videos and stuff like that. But I'll have an edited version as well that I'm going to put up on the main channel. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to go about doing that. Like, for this thing that you're watching right now, I probably will put it up as an edited video. Uh, but I'll probably not use any of my original audio, I think. Oh, wait. Somebody's calling me. Um, oh, shit. Somebody is calling me. Which is... Oh, that's probably a scammer. It's fine. It was like an overseas call. Sometimes it happens. Uh, okay. All right, there you go. Um, okay, so we, we're going to go with this. Let's give it a bit of a sharp chin there i think i think that'll work okay this looks uh this is a mm. <laughs> this is kind of actually scary compared to the rest of the ones that we've made for some reason, to me anyway. Like the rest of the ones we made kind of like just look really goofy. This one looks goofy for sure. But at the same time, at the same time, kind of looks kind of scary to me. All right, there we go. Okay, we're gonna do that. Okay, there we go. Uh, fill that in. Fill this up here. And fill that there. Do you still stream on Twitch? That is a good question. Um, I don't think I'll be streaming on Twitch anymore. Uh, so I, I noted out a few reasons for that. But the main one, I think, is the advertisements. I just find it really annoying that people have to watch those. Um, and also it's a lot harder for people to see on their mobile devices. And, um, there were some people, I think, uh, I know Minarian had literally only had a Twitch account so that they could watch me. So I think there's multiple people who told me that that was the case. So I think switching to YouTube is, um, I think it's an overall better thing to do than just you know, sticking on to Twitch. And also, I think um, there was a far more personal reason that I'm switching to YouTube, which is that I tend to be very perfectionistic. 
and I tend to not upload a lot of my videos onto YouTube because I'm like, okay, I made a mistake here or I said something stupid there. I'm not gonna... Sometimes I even hide the VOD, right? Because I think I did something silly. And I want to get rid of that part of me that is like, oh, I didn't do it perfect, therefore it should not go up at all. And I think the best way to do that is to have streams on YouTube because deleting unless I delete the video from YouTube, uh the VODs are available for everybody to access anytime. And that I think will help with some of the just, you know, perfectionism and anxiety and stuff like that. If I know that like I can't delete the content and I know that I'm gonna mess up, then it's an eventuality. I don't really need to care that much about it, you know? Don't know if that makes any sense, but yeah. That's the reason why I'm um, switching over from Twitch. Also, just think that uh, this is a smaller reason, but a lot of my fan base for um, RPG stuff is over on YouTube. What a scaly squirrel. It's scaly and it's scary. Yeah, a lot of my RPG fans are on YouTube because on Twitch, a lot of my followers and stuff were actually from my game development days. So yeah, it does not make sense on any level to stick to Twitch, I think. I was thinking of like multi-streaming, but um, I was also like, what's the point? Yes, give me the sweet vods, yeah. A few streamers seem to be switching. I stream very rarely, but I'm thinking whether to switch from Twitch as a main platform. I think it... For uh, Those are my reasons, but like, um, if... If you already have a fan base on Twitch, I don't know if that... Um, if if my reasons are gonna be as viable, you know. Like I, I I think it really depends on your situation, and I also think that it depends on what kind of content you're streaming. Like I, I'm not sure if this is accurate. I guess, but um, I think people on YouTube are a lot more open to. To like, you know, RPG stuff than on Twitch. Twitch seems like geared towards art stuff and um video game stuff and you know just chatting I, I i don't know if that's accurate though like i'm not sure i feel like all this time i've streamed on twitch i still don't really know how it works so i might not be the best person to ask for that but my experience streaming on twitch has been quite positive i've met a lot of like very good friends as a result of it. I attended um, the wedding of a friend that I met through Twitch recently. Um, and that was fun. Got to meet a lot of people that I have never met in real life before, but I have known them for several years online. And yeah, it also, I guess, depends on whether you're in a community on Twitch. Because I know like... Uh, for Twitch, there's a lot of uh, local communities and stuff. Like, uh, I know I was part of like the Singaporean kind of like Twitch streaming community, even though I stream stuff very different from them. So I think uh, if you're thinking of switching, you have to think about all those things as well. Not just the stuff that uh, caused me to switch over. But yeah, the, if I were to like pinpoint one, basic reason why I switched. I think it will have to be the fact that, you know, advertisements. I, I hate the fact that like Twitch forces you to watch advertisements and that it's hard to block them. I mean, you can block them, I believe, but it is hard to do for the average person. And just watching it on, um, just watching it on, uh, on your mobile device is kind of hard. So that's really my main reason. I think this drawing is done. But I also think uh, we need to draw something in the eyes there. I'm not sure what though. 
I'm also getting a bit tired, so we're gonna end off quite soon. Um, but let's finish up the eyes first. Uh, I, I want to kind of do an owl thing where like they have like large kind of eyes, uh, but I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that. I think like just start with small eyes maybe. And then kind of maybe do that. Oh, we could just fill it in with black actually. Then that might work. Let's, let's try that. Try filling the whole thing in with black. I'm not using my Posca marker because I want some texture for this. Yeah, I, I kind of like that. Like having like one small dot of light there. Definitely a subterranean creature. <laughs> Yeah, I can see this like coming out from the dark in like dungeon or something. It's probably gonna be really scary. Also, I, I guess like just to a final comment on that one on that thing. Um I feel like also it depends on your purpose. Like for me I wanna help out people. I wanna help out people uh learning how to do art solo rpgs etc my main purpose for putting on my videos is to assist people right that's my main purpose everybody can have different purposes um mine is not really to entertain i mean it is to an extent but it's primarily there to like help people find their own creativity and i feel like twitch might not be the best medium for that because of the stuff that i outlined and that's all i'm going to say about it um I think uh, I'm kind of spending too much time talking about something that I essentially already went over several times over. I think, um, yeah. This looks good to me. But I, I, hope, I hope that helped you out though. Like, I hope that um, answered your question. I'm not, I'm not sure if it did, uh, but I hope it did. Uh, okay, let's try to try this out. Okay, just do that. Okay. Okay, something is bothering me about this, which is I think the tangent over here. It's kind of not. Yeah, no, I I think uh I think I have to fix this before we end off, for like we we properly ended off. Which we will very soon, but I think this part needs a bit more darkness. There you go. That should be good. Maybe a bit of this here. Yeah. Thanks for the insights. No problem at all. I I, I really hope it helped. Um. Uh. It also depends on how long you've been doing it. Uh. But yeah, been doing Twitch streaming for a few years now, and I think it just serves different purposes. And I think we're done. I think that's the final drawing. I'm trying to see whether there's any way I can improve on this. I think uh, we could add more shadow here as well. Here. And I think I'll be putting this up as an edited video. The one thing I don't like about this drawing is actually the fact that this part is not covered in scales as well. It kind of feels a bit weird, like the rest of it kind of is. So I'm just going to cover the whole thing in scales like that. Yeah, that's much better. And then do that. Okay. Okay, I think that's good to go. And then color some of this in. Okay. Mm. Yeah. I'm going to do one more thing here, which is just to emphasize some of the musculature there. And we're done. We are done. Let's go through the stuff that we did today. And let me get rid of this scrap paper so that you can actually see so um, today we did a bunch of drawings, 
uh we did uh let me get rid of this eraser dust as well uh we did this armadillo like creature we did this um mushroom platypus we did this shadow scorpion and we did whatever the fuck this is uh i don't know what this is so i, I i'm not gonna pretend like i know what i just gave birth to essentially um thanks to you guys thank you uh that's it i think that's it for this stream uh i'm still not sure whether i'll um put this up on my uh, on on uh as an edited video rather but yeah uh oh there's knocking at my door so i think at this point i'm gonna have to stop streaming i think something's going on outside so goodbye guys thank you for watching <laughs>